live from the mist and shrouded mountaintop fortress that is X and Y Communications Headquarters. You're listening to the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. And now, here's your host, Scott McKay. How's it going, gentlemen? Welcome to yet another episode of the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. My name is Scott McKay at Scott McKay on Clubhouse, Twitter, and now TikTok as well. Real Scott McKay on Instagram. The website is www.mountaintoppodcast.com. You can find all the YouTube goodies by searching my name, S-C-O-T-M-C-K-A-Y on YouTube. And last but certainly not least, as always, gentlemen, if you're not a part of the Mountaintop Summit on Facebook, it is a growing cadre of men who are like-minded we want to be better men and get better women into our lives none of this homeless attitude of oh my god my wife left me and what am i to do boohoo none of that no bad advice just a group of guys wanting to be better do better and have a little fun while they're doing it mountaintop summit on facebook see you there guys if there's anything i know about you as an audience i've done my research i care and i'm bringing you a brand new guest today she's a new friend of mine she is from Miami, Florida, but here is a solemn hint, okay? She's originally from Bratislava, Slovakia, and she is a sex expert. Now, you already know that women who come from Eastern Europe tend to have a very special uh, positive outlook on things sexual between men and women, and they are typically a whole lot of fun to talk to about these matters. So when I heard from Leah Holmgren's publicist that she would like to come on and talk about how women love sex and casual flings. I knew there were enough of you guys out there who would have to suspend their disbelief to even tolerate such a conversation, let alone enjoy it, that, hey, it was a no-brainer to have her on. From Miami, a 10-year veteran of being an intimacy and relationship coach, welcome to Leah Holmgren. How are you? Hi, Scott. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. And hi, everyone. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. That sounds like uh, the dating game from the early 70s. <laughs> Leah, say hello to The Bachelors. <laughs> sounded exactly <laughs> like the tone of voice you just used. Well, first of all, thank you for being on. It's a pleasure to have you. I'm looking forward to a terrific conversation on a topic where, I don't know, angels fear to tread. So hopefully an angel like you can come along and tread not just lightly, but heavily on this subject so that we crush it underfoot and make something good happen from it whatever yes. all that means. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you told me that even though you're advertised as working with women, you actually have a lot of guys reading your book and are now coaching a lot of men too. By the way, the name of your book is Hook Up Without Heartbreak, How to Feel Empowered After Casual Sex, which is an interesting and auspicious title. So uh, tell me about what you do, what your practice is these days. So I work with uh, couples and individuals, male and female, on um, relationship and sex topics. And I also love outside-the-box um, topics, the like kinks, fantasies, casual sex as well, although our society is becoming more acceptable of this topic, but we are still having a lot of stigma around it. So, yeah, that's what I focus on. Things that you're kind of shy to talk about with your family, friends, and therapists. Oh, yeah, I batten down the hatches on my office before I even hit record on this thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, I got small children in the house, and I don't think they're ready to hear this. <laughs> I think my older son would like to hear it, whether he's ready or not. I don't know. Straight from your media materials reads as follows. Most women want sex, not just love, sex. But the same desire that our culture celebrates in men can leave women feeling anxious, insecure, emotionally attached, or even ashamed. Enough. In Hook Up Without Heartbreak, world-renowned intimacy and relationship coach Leah Holmgren teaches women how to let go of those negative feelings and reclaim their sexual freedom. Now, like I just alluded to, a lot of men are reading this book, too. Tell me a little bit about your thought process here, because it reminds me, at least on the surface, of the Mama Ginas of the world and the Eastons and Hardys of the world who are kind of trying to reclaim the word slut. But I'll tell you what, Leah, kind of like I kind of bristle when men try to reclaim toxic masculinity as something good. I kind of just want to reclaim the narrative in general. Let all the angry people use terms like slut and toxic masculinity. Let's change the narrative. Let's reframe it completely towards something positive. And I get the impression that's what you're trying to do. Am I correct? Yes, absolutely. And I just to start, I think that word slut, it means actually you're having fun. 
I honestly, it's sad that people are using it in the negative because I think it's actually positive. Women, they're sluts or that's how the society calls them. They should be proud because they're having fun. Um, but I don't think it's right to call people that way. That's why I wrote this book. And I think there are so many double standards still in the society. But wouldn't it be great if we are not calling each other this way and we just are accepting that we are having fun? Because life is heavy, hard enough. We should have more fun. And that's why I wanted to write a book. I wanted women to feel great about them enjoying their bodies and not having all this noise um, inside of their head. And I think it's good for men at the end. <laughs> well, hopefully it's good for men at the beginning too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Now there are a lot of ways we can go with this conversation. The first thing is you did just kind of reclaim the word slut, but not necessarily the word itself, but the idea. There shouldn't be this double standard that women having sex and having fun with it is somehow a negative, whereas men get to be heroes for notching their bedposts. You know, we talked on this show, the terminology, the vernacular we use around men and women having sex is just, it's just screwed up. Yeah, it's not fun. But insofar as men scoring and getting lucky and women putting out or giving it up, it's just as if the die has been cast. Women are sluts and men are heroes. Whereas we shouldn't be using these pejorative terms to begin with. It should be men and women doing what they're designed to do, being together in sexual relationships. Right on? Yeah, it's healthy. It's, it's healthy. It's fun. It's good for you. People that have great sex are not aging as fast. They're happier. They're healthier. It even like the research shows that people don't get as many diseases. It's, it's good for you. So just to looking at this, it, it's important to have good sex. But just to think about, I lived in New York and LA and, and Miami, okay, and, and I really rarely meet a guy who would care about a woman having a lot of sex. Usually the people I am surrounded with are not making a big deal out of it, but sometimes I talk to people from, from other places or different cultures or, or, you know, you name it, and they really care about the woman they choose for marriage to not that she doesn't have many lovers in the past. And I'm just always thinking, where are you coming from? <laughs> this is so outdated, and I think it shouldn't have place in our society anymore. I mean, at this point of our lives, we are in like 2022. But sadly, there are still those double standards. And, and I think that some men still expect that women don't have as much experience. But I think more experience this woman had in the past, the better lover she's going to be and more self-confident she's going to be with her own body. And that makes sex much better. I think that self-confidence is, is really important in sexuality and in enjoyment of sexuality. So there's this old running joke, of course, about this double standard you speak of. Men seem as if they want to marry a virgin, yet they're going around rapidly decreasing the population thereof as quickly as they can. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. True, yeah. Yeah. A word that you brought up a lot so far is the word fun. Mm -hmm. And we talk about on this show <laughs> how women just, how girls just want to have fun. And incidentally, you just laughed and giggled when I said that. And these guys know I beat this drum all the time. When you make a woman laugh, she's having fun. You didn't necessarily have to be a comedian and tell jokes. You simply had to help her relax and have fun. And yet guys seem to forget this. They get so wadded up and worry. And am I going to perform? Am I not going to perform? Am I going to overperform, underperform? They forget to enjoy this. You know, guys wait their whole life to have sex, and then the woman is in the bedroom with him, and he basically tears her open like he's a five-year-old, and this is a Christmas present. She may have even put on really nice, sexy lingerie. He just tears that off and tears it up. Guys forget to slow down. They forget to relax and savor the moment, and they're so wadded up in fear and worry that they do. They forget to have fun, and everybody suffers, not just the woman, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's just too stressful. Instead of having fun and enjoyment, you're overthinking things. And, you know, for women, we want to have fun, but oftentimes we're confusing because we were raised to, like, look for the right husband and be a good girl so someone wants us. I remember my mom would tell me, oh, you're going to sleep with many men. They will never respect you. Like, you will never find a husband, da, 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 da. And I'm sure most of women grow up in this kind of culture as well, if it's in the U.S. or in Europe. We know this, this is existent. And, um, you know, I think that we should just put aside this, this fear of, oh my God, what I say alone if I don't find a man and enjoy. And, and oftentimes what we want from a man is not to marry us right after first time we have sex. It's more just feeling like 
respected and appreciated. I would I would explain it that way. You know, if we feel safe with the man and we feel respected, we are much more relaxed and then sex is much better. That's what I learned through the years. Because a lot of times girls say, oh, I don't want to have sex yet. Um, what, what if he's not going to want me? What if that? But women want sex. They just want to have sex with someone who appreciates them. And that's very important. And I'm not saying that men should just sleep with one woman. Oh, God, no. But at least being in the moment. And as you said, like not the rush, you know, why is the rush for like, Enjoy the moment, make the woman feel special, and she's going to open up for you. You're going to have the best sex ever. Yeah, take a deep breath and focus on her for a change instead of yeah. whether you're going to perform or not. Yeah, exactly. You mentioned how your mom, and much like other mothers, warn their daughters. If you just spread your legs for any and every guy out there, they're just going to lack respect for you, have sex with you, and leave you. And certainly that happens. I don't know if mothers would use the exact words I just did, come to think of it, but you know, maybe some in Texas would. It is a stereotype, isn't it? And it's also a stereotype that women want to lock every guy down into relationships and that men really don't want to have a relationship. If we simply would talk to each other about what we envision for our dating and sex lives, maybe that might be a suitable first step to really being honest with each other, right? Yeah, it is It is sad because it all falls into the stereotypes, as you said. And oftentimes I would ask guys, like, why you don't want to see her again? They say, because she's too clingy. But clingy, you know, they fall into the stereotype, oh, she's clingy, she wants a relationship. No, it's not often the, that case. It's just to want, a, want a little bit of attention because women love attention. It doesn't mean that she wants to marry you. <laughs> you know, she might just want to get like sexy text message or or acknowledgement that she's out there. She might just want to hug or have a little bit of intimacy, but guys get immediately scared and say, oh, she wants a relationship, uh, you know. And for women, it's, all, as you said, exactly the opposite. They think, oh, he doesn't want me because, you know, he doesn't give me the, the attention that I want. He doesn't respect me, so I will move on. And I think we should be a little bit um, more open-minded towards being warmer with each other. And oftentimes I speak to younger men and they, they are scared to even hug a woman. They think it's uncool to hug a woman after they have sex or have any sort of intimacy because they think it's already like long-term relationship I'm committing. It's not true. Like you can still love people and hug people even if you have casual sex. And I'm a big advocate of loving a human being. I mean, you have friends, you love your friends. Why wouldn't you love someone you're sleeping with? It doesn't necessarily mean you have to marry them, you know? What you're talking about here, this idea of guys being scared in a sexual context, I think that you've just framed it in a way men aren't used to hearing as much nowadays, especially from a female expert, that guys are afraid of the intimate pieces of it. They're afraid of hugging. They're afraid of kissing. They're afraid that it's going to lead somewhere other than sex. A lot of guys are like, well, good grief, you two. I'm afraid to even talk to women about sex at all nowadays, let alone trying to worry about what happens while having sex or let alone after having sex, because... There's this angry minority of people, Leah, who are feeding decent men the trope that, you know, either all sex is rape or that women don't like sex, don't want sex. And it's making men really scared, especially in the post hashtag me too era to even talk to women, flirt with them at all, let alone get anywhere sexual with them. And I'm lamenting that whole postmodern reality out loud nowadays, because first of all, where does that leave heterosexual women with sexual needs like you and the readers of your book, right? Because yeah. what's going on here, not only is sex supposed to be fun, but it's certainly not supposed to be a crime simply for thinking about it and wanting to have it. Yet a lot of guys, normal red-blooded guys who would like to have sex with a woman think that they're already doing something bad. And I don't know if yeah. it harkens to a bunch of angry people being left out and want to take everybody else who has a healthy view of sex down with them. Or if it goes way back to Sunday school, where we're told that women necessarily tie sexual activity to feelings of connection and intimacy and even being married already. Faith-based circles would assert that sex without commitment hurts women. And angry people who don't like men or, you know, are, are somehow being left out of the dance even. You know, those are all completely different scenarios, but all perhaps valid reasons why someone would be angry at those who are out there enjoying sex. You know, they're just making men feel like there's something wrong with them for being horny. 
And then yeah. along you come and say, look, there's not even anything wrong with the women who are being horny, despite all the yeah. slut shaming that's been going on for hundreds of years. You want to comment on yeah. all of that? Of course I do. I, I, I'm <laughs> really, I'm really sad for the situation that's right now. I'm, I think that the hashtag me too, it made it even worse for women. It was like, oh, let's help women, but actually it's worse. And now like men are scared. Like I'm getting messages on my social media sometimes from guys. They say, you know, you're really sexy. I want to give you a compliment, but I'm scared because I don't want you to think that I'm a creep. This is horrible. I love compliments from men. I love to be hit on by men. I mean, it makes life fun. I want to see men looking at me and flirting with me. Sure, I don't want them to grab my ass. That would not be appropriate, but to flirt, I mean, I love going to Italy because Italians are very flirty. And, you know, if you think about it, men are initiative. They are more horny than women because they have more t- testosterone. They are supposed to be more horny. That's what the, the biology says. And now we are putting men completely somewhere in the corner and we, we don't want them to take charge because we call them creepy. Oftentimes the, the mean people, as you said, and now women are sad because they're like, oh, no guys after me, you know, 75% of women are submissive. They want men to take charge. And then you have this little amount of feminists. They're like, no, we, I, you know, and now everyone is waiting. Women are waiting. The men don't take charge because they're worried. They don't want to be like, oh my God, accused, which is really sad. And now women, they don't take charge. I take charge, but I'm a very small percentage of women that take charge. Like a lot of women will wait still, you know, because they think that's, that they like it that way. They want to be approached. So we are in this really strange situation right now. We are like kind of stuck here because neither gender knows what to do. We don't, they don't know. Men, men are worried. Women don't know how to approach because that's not what they know. Well, that's not what they feel comfortable with. They don't feel confident. They don't know. So I'm trying to teach women it's okay to ask for sex. It's okay to say, hey, I'm horny. Would you want to come to my house? But not many women are still comfortable to do it. And then we have this like, in like the new generation Z, they, they don't even have sex, to be honest with you. Like they're really, really anti-sexual because they're so confused with all of this. And then you have this crazy constant, which... Of course, it's important to know if you want to have sex with someone or not. But the constant got into the point when you're like, oh, can I touch your arm? I mean, really? When I'm going for a date with a guy, I want him to touch my arm. (laughs) I want him to touch my leg when I'm on a date with someone. It's nice. It's sexy. Like, I get goosebumps if someone I'm attracted to touches my arm. You know, it's like all these things are just really confusing. And I am not advocating for this craziness, to be honest with you. Well, what I always like to ask is how in the world did we get seven and a half billion of us on this planet when sex is so freaking complicated? I mean, can you imagine if it were simple and easy, exactly like you're advocating, Leah? We'd be overrun with humans and with babies. We'd all be out screwing our brains out. Yeah, I don't know. It depends, <laughs> you know. I think that a lot of lot of religions, they actually support so many kids. Yeah, you would and they don't they don't accept birth control and they're I think contributing to a huge amount of kids in this planet because if you think about Western world and even I don't know US and, and these countries we actually have higher mortality lately than we have the birth. So let's talk about that for a second because that's a topic yeah. we camp on around here frequently. And I actually recently read a study that men are losing their testosterone levels and their sperm count and I honestly think it's because. Men need to be initiative and successful and, and have this sex drive to have more testosterone. It's like a circle. And if men are so scared to even be horny, then of course they are going to lose their sperm count and testosterone. This is really bad what's happening right now. Yeah, that's really an interesting point of view. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll tell you, there are a number of ways that we are being pressured away from being the man of the house. The nuclear family unit is under pressure. And a lot of pressure against having heterosexual activity. And, you know, there's so many angles of attack here that it's really obvious if people would just get over their cognitive dissonance and see it for what it is. I mean, you know, I have to chuckle a little bit when you were talking about how women and men are biologically wired to be horny and have sex. Well, of course we are. That's how procreation happens. That's how our species is furthered. So anything that would put pressure against doing that has to be pressure by definition against the birth rate. And of course, people nowadays love to cry, follow the science. Well, you know, follow the science, knucklehead. Men are horny. Women are horny. And that's the way it is. Yet you get these guys who have decided out loud. I mean, I get angry emails 
not from women, Leah. Most women who email me are standing up and cheering like you would. Okay. When I talk yeah. about this stuff, the angry emails are from men saying women don't like sex. Women are playing keep away. The last thing a woman wants is sex. Sex oh. is a, sex <laughs> is a, you know, all sex is rape. They're even saying that. And Says the guy who never gets laid. <laughs> see, now you stole my thunder. <laughs> there you go. Out of the mouth of the woman herself. What these guys don't want to hear is every time they say, they can their own macho, women don't like sex. They just want to shame you. All they're doing is broadcasting out loud in public. They have no idea what it takes to be skillful with women. Gentlemen, if you think women don't like sex, look in the mirror because the truth is they just don't like having sex with, with you. you. Exactly. Yet, mm -hmm. That's where you and I come in. <laughs> We're into affecting the lives of millions one sex drive at a time, aren't we? But yeah. listen, you got these guys who are forming these groups, men going their own way, the red-pilled manosphere guys, and they think they're getting into a big rah-rah echo chamber of guys who think like them and they think they're helping themselves. All they're doing is driving themselves away from their own biology and trying to feel good about it. And what does it do in the name of a movement allegedly being designed for the betterment of those who are part of it? They're actually falling into this trap of being yeah. sanctioned away from what we were born to do, which is procreate. You see mm -hmm. this in these, the social justice groups that are designed allegedly on paper for the empowerment of a certain group of people who have been marginalized or whatever, and they end up doing nothing positive and only fomenting further division and increasing the power of a few. Yeah, and they're steering shit up. Basically. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and it's amazing how much of this is designed to lower the birth rate. Yeah. Exactly. And we have whole episodes on this. If you guys want to go back to episode number 250 with Scott Yenner, that's the whole show. Prepare to have a jaw-dropping experience if you have not listened to that one yet. But along you come, Leah. You are a red-blooded female human being saying, uh, guys, women want to have sex with you too. Okay? Get over yourself. It's supposed to happen. Yet, men are indeed our own worst enemies, Leah. It starts with these hundreds of years of slut shaming, only now culminating in, you know, women don't like sex and everything that's happened with the Me Too movement. Yeah. Guys generalizing what's meant to be a very specific admonition. What has gone on here for centuries? Tell us about the history of slut shaming of women. And you know what? I'll be the first to admit it's men who have done it. I mean, just to kind of see this conversation a little bit, men being possessive and jealous wanting to own a woman sexually, therefore hide her away and threaten her and threaten other men if they even look at her or touch her. I mean, some cultures won't even let a woman go out in public and be seen. Where does this history come from? Am I onto something here? Yeah, it's just a way of, of controlling women. And it started all with the agriculture time when men actually started owning a land. It was no more the sharing and caring society before where people were hunting together, hunting and gather societies when everything was shared. They got one mammut <laughs> and everyone in the village was sharing the meat and they were eating the meat and it, it was all plenty. You know, women were, and men had sex all together. They all took care of the families. And then suddenly they started uh, gathering land. They started uh, the agricultural revolution showed up and then guys basically had women as their property. And in order to keep women, because women were always horny as they are until today, in order to keep them just for themselves so they don't have to take care of child of some other guy, they were threatening them in, in this, this ways. Like, you will be a slut, I will throw you out from the house. And the, the women, of course, didn't have this, the masculine power as, as men to, to fight for a land. So their only way to survive in those societies was to be with a man and with a man who has a huge land. And it's until today, you know, women want to have a man who has money, for example. So, you know, that's where it all started. And it was just then, then the religion come into the mix, which is also a form of control, in my opinion. And that also was at, at the beginning, no men and women can't have sex. So it's all monogamy. But then suddenly 
is much more strict towards women, even until today in some Arabic societies. If a woman would have another man or extramarital affair, she would be murdered. If guy does it, it's okay. So we are stuck in this since, since then for thousands and thousands of years. And, and we had sexual revolution in the 60s, and I think we are on a good way. But I still feel like there's, as you said, these little groups of people, they try to like screw it all up. Like we are on a great way to, to get back to like this normalcy where we are enjoying sex. Women now are also making more money than men. So they don't need to be worried to with a guy. So finally we have a chance to actually choose a man because we enjoy him and we want to have sex with him and we are horny and not only a guy that we want that he takes care of us, which I think is amazing. We are emancipated now to choose a man and, and, you know, say, Hey, I'm horny, let's have sex. But yet there are still these groups and movements. They're ruining it for us. And now, you know, we are in the situation, as I said, that it's, it's quite complicated, but this is where it comes from. And the, the word slut is still like, it's just, it's just the same thing as it was before. You know, you're going to sleep with others. You're going to be a slut. You're going to be a whore and, and this and that. So we need to stop this immediately. <laughs> you know, talking about the double standard, you mentioned majority Muslim cultures and my wife and I are very well traveled and we love to go to those parts of the world. We love that culture and think it's great, but indeed they are uber protective of women, especially sexually, you know, for better or worse. Yeah. And I had a good joke with a guy who I believe was a cab driver in a majority Muslim country where women were in hijab. And I said, you know, what's interesting to me as a third party observer coming to your country is that women are protected from view. But if a woman looks at a guy and sees him in a pair of designer jeans and goes, "Ooh, girl, he's got a nice ass. There's nothing to stop her. You know, women get to <laughs> look and have their jollies with guys all the time. It's as if guys somehow figured out along the way women don't have any real sex drive or anything. And yet women are the ones who need to be protected from, you know, prying male eyes. And he looked at me, kind of raised his eyebrows and started laughing as he said to me, you've just stumbled upon the inside joke of our entire culture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. 100%. It's, it's, it's interesting, right? Oh, yeah. 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 And yeah, yeah, indeed, just like you're saying here, Leah, um, women are actually horny if we just open our eyes and give them permission to be horny. One of the other things that just came to mind is in bygone eras, uh, you know, this is something that the evolutionary biology, evolutionary psychology guys would say is, quote unquote, following the science. But women are equipped to have sex and be carrying a baby for nine months. Whereas men can go spray their seed anywhere and everywhere, which in their mind is evidence that women, you know, probably aren't as horny as men, aren't equipped for as much sex as men are capable of or are designed to want. But wait, hold on a second. Now, those theories and hypotheses have come to roost on the perch of a world where we have low cost, effective birth control and lots of preventative measures from dying of an STD. So men and women both are far more capable of having sex without any reproductive consequence or a much less likelihood of any reproductive consequence. I mean, if we're so inclined, we can bring, you know, abortion into this conversation, too. But the point being is women are free to screw their brains out without a whole lot of worry about being pregnant or dying from this this little tryst. And what that has done is given women the actual logistical ability to have as much sex freely as any guy would. Now the psychology simply needs to follow. Yeah. Right. That's that's completely right. Yeah. We, we need to catch up on this. And, you know, it's so deeply rooted in us, the religion, the upbringing and the genes, too, because. When I was doing research for my book, you know, it was interesting. Like women get so attached to men oftentimes after they're having sex. And almost the curves on the graph go opposite directions. Like men are really giving women attention before they have sex. And then once they come, it's kind of like a little bit, you know, they go, they do, they, men can compartmentalize. They go to do their job. They go back home or whatever they do. And women get attached. And I was thinking about it so much. And it makes total sense because in the past, when women had sex, they had no idea if they are pregnant or not. Long, long time ago. And they had to wait two, three weeks oftentimes until they got their next period to see if they got pregnant or not. 
And it makes sense because from my experience, a lot of women are like a little bit attached to a man or more attached, depending how good the sex was for a couple of weeks. And then it kind of passes. And I feel it's only, honestly, it's like subconscious reaction to having great sex and kind of wanting to know if you are pregnant or not, because in the past, women needed men for survival. If you were a woman and you, you were pregnant back in the days and you would not have a man around, you would most likely die. You would not be able to take care of the baby and get food and, you know, be, be safe from the predators. So it's kind of like deeply rooted in us. And I think maybe after some time, we are going to get rid of this subconsciously. And we have to work on the consciousness. We have to say, you know, we don't need to have anyone for survival these days. And also, like, I'm on birth control. I don't need to be worried I'm pregnant. So I think that the psychology will be next and then will be the subconscious that will catch up. But that can take us a while. Well, you're talking about an actual evolution of human psychology. Exactly. Yes. So what you're advocating, if I'm getting my thoughts straight here, is first of all, you're admitting there's some credibility to the fact that women do tend to feel a little more attached after sex. And yeah. what I hear you saying, if I can use a little bit coarser language than you are, is they ought to archetypally get over themselves. If women would only relax sexually, realize that perhaps our primal instincts are playing tricks, playing tricks on them. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's where I was yes. going with that. Yeah. Then yeah. they could relax and get laid more often. Yeah. It's wow. uncomfortable sometimes. I agree. It's uncomfortable, but we shouldn't make such a big deal out of it. You know, like just, you know, it's, it's, I, I always say it's my primal instinct is my oxytocin, la, 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 you know, I will be fine. Just give it 14 days <laughs> and you'll be fine. Nobody died from casual sex. Now these days, of course, I'm not talking about STDs, but just to have sex and fun is not going to hurt you. You know, it's fun. Just do it the right way and do it when you really want to do it. I think that's also very important. Well, I think it's easier said than done in the minds of a lot of male minds who are listening to this show. Yeah. Because we certainly don't want to pressure women. We don't want to be rapey and predatory towards women. But guys are thinking, mm -hmm. oh, sure, I'm just going to walk up to this woman, tell her she should get over her primal urges to have this nesting instinct because we had sexy time together and so, no. Hey, you know, I listened to this sex expert on a podcast. She said, you ought to get over yourself and enjoy getting laid. And act no, like that's a guy. not going to work. That's no, not it's work. not going to work. But here, but, listen, check it out. Yeah. Yeah. One it's thing I do know is the case and you can look hmm? at youth culture at the high school and even the collegiate level compared to where it was in the eighties and nineties and realize people have less social hang up over sexuality in general, not just heterosexuality, but sex of any kind, shape or form, really. So that shame towards sex, there is a rewiring of our collective human psyche, at least in the Western world right now, towards feeling less shame towards sex. So mm -hmm. regardless of how guys may feel hearing you talk about it in the specific ways you're talking about it, Culture is bearing out the trend even as we speak. So I would say I agree with you. I think we're headed in that direction and it can only continue. There will come a time where indeed even more women start conducting their sex lives in a way that has been stereotypically described as how men would. Man, yeah. When I was single, there were women out there, single mommies who wanted to screw like sailors. And it caught me off guard at first. I mean, these women are like, you know, just shut up, take me home and screw yeah. my brains out, please. You talk yeah. too much, you know, things like that. And you realize, man, these women really are horny. And sure, I think that trend will continue. You know, whatever we want to think about it, whether we want to slut shame women for that or whether we want to celebrate it, I think it is a juggernaut of a social trend at this point. Which brings us to the final question I want to ask you, which in many ways and for many guys is going to be the most important one. We talk a lot, Leah, about making women feel safe and comfortable in our presence, pressuring them, objectifying them, getting too handsy with them too quick, grabbing their ass, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you made a point for women having their arms touched and guys touching women's legs on dates, but I think even you would have to admit you got to be turned on by them and there has to be a positive flirtation going on there before we move to that level. Regardless, yeah. what I tell guys is, listen, if you let your masculinity do the heavy lifting and polarize her female nature, masculinity and femininity are the sexual catalysts for horniness. Okay. You let your natural masculinity do that. 
you get turned on by her natural feminine nature and then make her feel safe and comfortable, not just physically, but emotionally. Here's a big hint. Don't slut shame her. Hey, there you go. That's a good way to make her feel comfortable. Celebrate that <laughs> female sexuality. And Leah, I'll just tell you what I tell guys behind closed doors, even when no women are around. I'll tell you the clothes fall off. Women just decide, okay, you know what? You're good. I don't have to put up this front where I'm a nice girl and that I don't have sex because I'm not afraid of you taking advantage of me sexually. You have gone from a guy I fear will make a sexual move to a guy I want to be sexual with. And when that Rubicon is crossed, a veil is lifted, a world of magic opens and guys go, my goodness, these women are horny. And if I just like them and respect them and value their sexuality, wow, do they want to have a lot of sex. <laughs> yeah. So and then, like, if you, if you want to go to detail how to do it, I just yes, tell guys, listen to her, put your phone aside. Don't talk about like other women and your bodies. Just be a good listener. Give her compliments, you know, and see the flirt. And, and, and when you said like, oh, when I'm on a date, there has to be some flirt in order to touch her arm. I always ask people, why do you go on a date with someone? There is no flirt. Like, why do you waste the time? That's my first question, too. Well, in all fairness, some people might meet online and they're not really sure where the chemistry is until they get yeah, out that's the could open be with true. them. And that's yeah. easier said than done yeah. for some guys. Yeah. yeah. But Might I hear be, you. yeah. But yeah. like a couple of phone calls and see, you know, at least because I just, I just don't know, like you don't want to go on a date you're absolutely not attracted to. Then you can call it a business meeting or you go, you know, <laughs> like you, you, you want to have friends and you do it different ways. But like if guy asked me to go on a date, I feel he's into me. And, and he wants, and if I'm not into him, I will not go for dinner. I don't need to get dinner. I can have food at home. You know, it's just, it's just, I think people should have a little bit of like, a, like there should be something already that you actually give someone an evening of your life. Yeah. It makes things easier. Huh? Well, a couple of practical pieces I can offer here. First of all, women aren't afraid to talk about sex. I think guys aren't used to talking about sex unless there's sex imminently happening. Uh, but women will talk about sex matter of factly, like it's a bodily function and you can get women to talk about sex. Sometimes women will start talking about sex with you. And if you don't get freaked out and act like a nervous little puppy dog, when the sex comes up, chances are she'll feel more comfortable with the fact that you know your way around human sexuality. And that's helpful. Yeah. Another very practical bit is I know this may feel a little bit like a cart before a horse. But just like when men feel very vulnerable when they're asking a woman out for the first time, women feel very vulnerable when they get naked with a man for the first time. If you want to stay naked and do things with her while she's naked, you can't body shame her when she gets naked for you. You have to really enjoy her and, yes, give her compliments, tell her she looks fantastic and beautiful and sexy. If you roll your eyes and go, oh, you know, I kind of got some cottage cheese on the legs there, honey, you know, she's going to put her clothes back on and run out of your house and slam. Does anyone do it? <laughs> you, you, you know, probably more than I do. Leah, don't put me to the test. Okay. Don't let me tell you stories okay. I don't want to tell. Okay, good. I'll just make you angry <laughs> and okay. frustrated oh, and bring no. up a lot of bad memories for oh, some okay. of these guys. But okay. yeah, there are guys, oh. we're starting from different areas and this slut shaming bit and the body shaming bit, that river runs deep with a lot of people. I mean, some guys, some women too, this isn't gender specific, but people will sabotage themselves because they fear getting to that level. They're afraid they won't perform or something unconscious is keeping them from enjoying that sex and wait for it, having the fun they want to have. So they do something even perhaps without realizing they're saying it, they just blurt it out that ruins the moment. Mm, guys do. Wow. That. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We need more well, reps. We need more ways to uh, you know. get in front of each other, stop fearing the sex, talk about it. And uh, guys need to get a little braver and realize men and women were born to do this thing. It's what it's for. And also, like, I want to also point quickly to the aftercare. Once guys have sex with a woman, it's very important to have some sort of aftercare. And it's enough if it's a couple of messages just to catch up with her. We really appreciate it. You know, it makes us feel good well, and in special the moment. in the moment too. And then after it just says, don't just forget about her. I know men get distracted. It's it's also part of their brain, which I researched on that. You guys get like sucked into work and it's nothing personal <laughs> oftentimes, but you know, it is what it is. And I think it's good. Just put it in your calendar. Say, Hey, reach out to Heather <laughs> two days after or day after. It's a couple of times. 
you know, it's a biological truth. I was just talking about this on a coaching call this very morning with a guy. It's a biological truth that as soon as guys blow their load, they have an orgasm, mm -hmm. they bust a nut. Mm -hmm. Even mid bust, guys may think, damn, I'm hungry. Well, yeah. Wow, I'm sleeping. I know. I know. They're ready to go on to the next yeah. thing as soon as yes. they blow that load. It's a biologically yeah. wired fact. Yeah. Guys, you got to fight that. Or... <laughs> the stronger the orgasm was, I feel like they completely have their brain wiped out and they yes. just move on for a week. They completely forget that that woman exists. And for her, it's quite <laughs> the opposite. When we have sex that was so amazing, yes. we have a withdrawal. Like we want more. We, we are really struggling. Like we would want to have more sex and more. Get and out more. of and your own way, gentlemen. Sexy. Get yeah, out of then, your own way. <laughs> Care about her. Really you can't get it up. She's going to take it personally. She's not going to blame you yeah. for it. You come yeah. too soon. She's not going to think you're an idiot. She's going to think she's freaking sexual superwoman and she's going to pat herself on the back. If you're having right. any of these problems, why don't you just go down on her for a while and practice giving her clitoral orgasms with something other than your unit? And guess what? Two things are likely to happen. First of all, she'll be extremely happy with you. I mean, I can't count how many women have told me guys say they love to eat pussy and then they do it for 30 seconds yeah i know it needs to be 20 minutes at least right if you're last down there for more than five minutes you're a hero and i'm thinking yeah. boss that's really so yeah. difficult gentlemen and the second thing that's going to happen not only will she be very happy but you know you're going to look down and you're going to have a raging heart on because you got out of your own way stop being your own worst enemy and stopped thinking about it and just let nature take its course yeah. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff, Leah Holmgren. You know what? You and I have hours and hours worth of potential material we could discuss with these guys. So I really hope you'll come back and join us soon. Would you do I that? would love to. <laughs> okay. In the meantime, I know these guys are going to love you. In the meantime, I want to direct you to Leah Holmgren's website. Her name is her URL, but as I'm in the custom of doing, Leah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to direct these guys to mountaintoppodcast.com, front slash Leah, L-I-A, three little letters, a whole lot of love and a whole lot of knowledge, mountaintoppodcast.com, front slash Leah. The name of her book is Hook Up Without Heartbreak, How to Feel Empowered After Casual Sex, and a little birdie named Leah told me probably as many men buy and read that book as women. Uh, man, there's a world of eye-opening truth in that book for you. Mountaintoppodcast.com front slash Amazon. That's my Amazon influencer queue, gentlemen. And right now, if you're catching this show a couple days after its release, it'll be right there at the top of the queue for you. Hook Up Without Heartbreak, How to Feel Empowered After Casual Sex by Leah Holmgren, found at mountaintoppodcast.com front slash Amazon. Leah Holmgren, thank you so much. This has been a fascinating, wonderful, and indeed very fun conversation. Yeah, it was very nice. I'm so so happy that uh, I could talk to you and talk to all the men and clarify certain things. <laughs> well, you're a delight, and I'm glad you're here. And indeed, the invitation for you to come back is wide open. Thank you. And men, if you have not yet been to mountaintoppodcast.com, check out the latest masterclass we've got going on, Okay. We just had the one here for April. It was a huge success. Check in at mountaintoppodcast.com and see what we have going on, what's slated for May and months going forward. You can even sign up for a season ticket and get eight master classes. Count them for 30% off if you would have purchased tickets for those separately. While you're at mountaintoppodcast.com, be sure to visit our sponsors, Origin in Maine, Hero Soap, and Keyport. See what those guys have going on for you. There are buttons you can use to launch to the respective websites of each of our illustrious sponsors. And when you take them up on their wares, you can use the code MOUNTAIN10 to get 10% off of any of the three. And gentlemen, the invitation is also still open to you to get on my calendar to talk to me free for 25 minutes. When you do that, we'll talk about where you are right now in your relationships with women, whether you want to have more and better sex, whether you would like to have better women in your life, build a relationship up with the one you've already got in your life, or whatever is going on, whatever your reality is right now, we can work up a plan to make it even better for you in the year 2022 and going forward. That and so much more is there for you at mountaintoppodcast.com. And until I talk to you again real soon, this is Scott McKay from X and Y Communications in San Antonio, Texas. Be good out there. The Mountaintop Podcast is produced by X and Y Communications. All rights reserved worldwide.
Be sure to visit www.mountaintoppodcast.com for show notes. And while you're there, sign up for the free X and Y Communications newsletter for men. This is Ed Roy Odom speaking for The Mountaintop Podcast.